AMD might be releasing new high-end GPUs much sooner than expected. Let's talk about it. Before that, as usual, this video is brought to you by CDKDeals.com, but hold on because this time they got a special Black Friday deal running that could save you a lot of money. CDK Deals is a website dedicated to getting you the best prices on games and software, and during their Black Friday event, you can finally get rid of that pesky Windows watermark for the lowest price I've seen all year. Look, their Windows 10 and 11 OEM keys are already at a great price, but if you sign up through their mailing list, you can get even more benefits, and when you go to check out, just use Use code GPC20 and you can save an additional 30% bringing the price for Windows 10 all the way down to roughly $16 and Windows 11 for as low as around $22. Also, you can check out securely with PayPal and once it clears, you should get access to the code in your account as well as your email. In order to activate that new copy, just search activate under Windows, type in your key and after a few seconds, you'll see a message notifying you that it works. So if you want to save big on your next Windows purchase and you want to support the channel, be sure to click the link in the description below. If you've been following tech news, you might have heard the rumor that AMD wouldn't be launching any high-end GPUs until RDNA 5 in 2025, but it looks like things might have changed as one or more GPUs might actually be releasing potentially as soon as early next year that would be significantly faster than AMD's current flagship RX 7900 XTX, and Nvidia should definitely be worried because the RDNA 4 architecture as a whole seems to be an impressive upgrade over RDNA 3. Now, these rumors all started with a Red Gaming Tech video that he posted not too long ago, and if you don't know, Red Gaming Tech has leaked a number of things about AMD. He's definitely got some inside sources, and in that video, some of that info really shocked me because I was not expecting to see any updates on super high-end AMD GPUs until RDNA 5. So let's go ahead and take a quick look and then I'll break it down for you. So if we take a look at this slide here that he put out, we can see that he's talking about the entry to mid-range GPUs and there are a couple of different options that are being laid out. So we have a Navi 48 version with 32 WGPs and 48 megabytes of infinity cache, which apparently will be likely using 192-bit GDDR7 and have, of course, PCIe Gen 5 X16 for the connection to the motherboard. And then there should also be a Navi 44 with 20 WGPs and 32 megabytes of infinity cache using a 128-bit bus also with GDDR7, except for this time using only eight lanes of Gen 5, which is gonna be fine for modern motherboards, but if you stick it in a Gen 3 board, this could be an issue. Now, there is another option he lists below that with a 128 and 96 bit bus for these same GPUs. However, he said in the video, it sounds like right now, it's more likely it will be using that 192 bit bus for the higher end one and the 128 for the more mid range or entry level GPU. And I know 192 bit bus doesn't sound that great. However, we do have to keep in mind that GDDR7 can be actually had apparently up to 36 gigabits per second by probably 2025 or maybe even next year. Although certainly we should be seeing 32 gigabits per second likely sometime next year as well. So with 32 gigabits per second memory versus the current, you know, 18 to maybe 20 gigabits per second that we're seeing on GDDR6, well, yeah, that's a substantial increase in the memory bandwidth. So they really don't need a 256 or even 384 bit bus for these GPUs for them to still be relatively powerful. It sounds like it should be faster than the 7800 XT, probably a little slower than the 7900 XT. However, it should be doing that at far lower power levels and it should have a small increase to its ray tracing performance as well. So that's actually really good news and that could lead to a situation where we have more GPUs like the 7800 XT, except for even better next time around that could seriously threaten Nvidia. However, guys, there's also one more GPU he did mention and that's the RX 8800. Now, according to Red Gaming Tech, this GPU could be essentially a refresh of the 7900 100 XTX, or at least that's what it sounded like to me. And if that is the case, we could be looking at a GPU, which if it is still based off of the older RDNA 3 architecture, could still get substantially faster if some small tweaks are made, as well as moving it to the N4P process rather than its current five slash six nanometer combination that's being used. But what exactly would it look like? Well, let's go ahead and take a look at this chart to see just that. So this GPU here would likely be based off of the N4P node. And in terms of the shaders, we'd probably be talking about the same 12,288 as I don't think it makes sense to respin new silicon that would have a significant cost, whereas they can just get a large performance increase from the clock speeds of the core and the memory. And speaking of core clock speeds, I do think you will be seeing three gigahertz boost clocks and you will likely still be seeing GDDR6. Now it's theoretically possible
possible that they could, you know, retune it to use GDDR7, and I'd love to see that as that would have substantial performance increases as the RDNA3 architecture is definitely memory bandwidth limited. However, it does seem fairly unlikely. It's more likely that we will be seeing the 24 gigabits per second Samsung GDDR6 modules as those should be significantly cheaper and far easier to implement on the already good 7900 XTX with just some small tweaks. And then if we do that, doing the math here, guys, on the same 384-bit bus with that same 24 gigabytes of memory, we're talking about 1,152 gigabytes per second of memory bandwidth, roughly a 20% increase over the current 7900 XTX. And with the same 96 megabytes of cache, roughly, and a TDP increasing from 355 to 400 watts, roughly, we're talking about a GPU that, on average, should be roughly 20% faster than the 7900 XTX, and with some overclocking, could certainly far exceed that. In fact, it could be anywhere between like 30 to 40% faster if you're willing to put in the time to overclock the GPU and assuming that AMD allows us to raise the power significantly. I mean, at 500 plus watts, this thing should absolutely scream, but even out of the box, we're talking about a GPU, which if you look just below this on the chart, the RTX 4090 would be technically a little bit faster at probably roughly around 5% faster than that, but at 450 watts, an increase in power, as well as a significant increase in price, it's just not gonna be worth it for a lot of people who do want a really high-end GPU, but don't want to spell well in excess of $1,000, as it's sounding like the RX 8800, in terms of it being a refresh, it would probably be targeting that same 999, or who knows, maybe they could even bring it in at 799 or 899, depending on when this thing actually releases. So is it really worth it to spend double or nearly double the price to get, you know, a small performance increase? Now, the 4090 will be significantly faster in ray tracing. However, guys, my stance on ray tracing right now is that I think it needs so much more work and we need so much more performance that the RTX 40 series, even the highest end GPUs, just won't age well when it comes to path tracing performance down the line, much like the 20 series didn't really age well either. So maybe the 50 or 60 series will be worth definitely investing in for ray tracing performance, but currently right now, I just don't think that's the case, but that's just my opinion. Tell me in the comments if you think differently. But the one advantage NVIDIA definitely does have, in my opinion, is DLSS. The question is, is it worth an additional $600 to $800? I don't know. It's really going to depend on how heavily you use that and how much better you think it is. But there you have it, guys. I was really shocked to see these leaks coming out here, guys. I've been talking about a RDNA 3 refresh probably happening for some time. And now we have the first, probably at least I would consider to be fairly reputable leaker actually coming out and saying, hey, it sounds like this is happening. So hopefully it does. I'd love to see AMD continue to compete with NVIDIA in the ultra enthusiast market and I can't wait to get my hands on it when it launches, hopefully sometime early next year. But hey, that's just what I think. Do you think that the RX 8800 really will be 20% or even higher performance than the RX 7900 XTX? And do you think that NVIDIA really should be worried or do you think that they're doing just fine with the RTX 4090? Let me know your guys' thoughts in the comments below and of course, I'll see you in the next video. If you made it to the end of the video, be sure to drop a like. Every time you do so, AMD and NVIDIA release new GPUs. Also, if you want to see more, check out one of these related videos. You won't be disappointed.